Hi everybody, uh, welcome to another Wednesday here at Xanadu Comics in beautiful, currently sunny Seattle. Uh, we're finally starting to thaw out here, and of course, with the springtime comes new comics. Well, Wait, spring with time, it's like February. All the time. Hey! <laughs> here, it's spring to me. I don't care. Cool. Right, you can't no. tell me otherwise. Hey, no, you know, whatever. It's cool. Honestly. <laughs> um. <laughs> wow. The hate from this side of the room. I, Jesus. Um. You know, I'm relaying my messages through Will from now on. I'm not talking. Will, Will, are you going to do, are you gonna do that for him? <laughs> uh, I'm going to remain neutral here. <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought. That's what I thought. Um, speaking of taking sides, you may have heard of a little comic called Civil War that might be getting a movie adaptation at some point oh, in the near future. Oh man, is that them when superheroes fight? Yeah, yeah, cool. yeah. Well, this is not that. Oh. <laughs> this is what is now being packaged as the prelude to Civil War. Um, The New Warriors by Zeb Wells and Sky Young. Yes, way before Scotty Young was famous for drawing babies and little girls. He drew teenagers with reality shows. <laughs> um, this follows the new warriors during their reality show phase, which was six whole issues yeah, right. before Mark <laughs> Millar decided to go and blow them all up. <laughs> uh, this is some of my all-time favorite Marvel comics. They took these characters who used to be teenage adventurers, and they were just like, okay, well, what happens when you grow up in the Marvel Universe, exactly? And uh, you've got Night Thrasher kind of trying to be responsible. He has a really interesting relationship with another member of the team, Microbe. You've got uh, Robbie Baldwin, Speedball, getting pulled back into the life of being a superhero, and he's just all for it. Uh, Nova, slightly less so. Name Rita, even less so. <laughs> And they go across the country beating up supervillains on camera, <laughs> running into, honestly, a really, really eclectic mix of characters. You've got super apes, you've got robot philosophers, you've got uh, some weird losers in animal suits like every good superhero comic. <laughs> but overall, just amazing, amazing work here. It's cartoony, it's fun, and it's actually really, really touching. My uh, first pick is Uncanny X-Men 31, and I, you know I'm a huge X-Men fan. You're either going to love or hate this issue. Um, I am just kind of a, still astounded by it all. Brian Michael Bendis, he announced last week that he's actually leaving Uncanny, all the X-Men franchise, uh, but he's wrapping things up. But this is a really interesting story. Um, it kind of is the big finale to the, uh, the last one, the testament of Professor X, as you know, Cyclops, who was, was under the influence of the Phoenix, uh, kill Professor X. So what happens when you read the will? And it led to this really like this incredible secret that Professor X had. This Omega Level mutant, and lots of cool deaths and weird things that kind of happen. And what I love about it is he pretty puts the spotlight on Eva Bell, who's one of the coolest of all the new mutants that he's created. So uh, once again, big wrap up. It's kind of a big kind of mini finale before his grand finale. So there's certain things that you're going to love and some continuity. Uh, lovers are going to probably hate. <laughs> I love it because, well, I don't want to give anything away, but it's a lot of fun, and I uh, love Claremont, I mean, Bendis. Claremont <laughs> Bachelor. What am I thinking? Bendis and Bachelor. Wow. I love them together. So, please hurry up, Casey, and take this over. I, 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 I will. Mistakes. I will. I'm just mad Havoc wasn't actually in that comic. It's true. Havoc gets no love. No, it's not true, man. He's all over on Candy Avengers. Yeah, and then they blew off his face and made him a villain. Face it's Rick Renner. What gave do you him want? a whole life he didn't really have. All right. Anyway, in a superhero comic where not as many horrible things happen, <laughs> new from Image, Secret Identities, uh, from longtime superhero writer Jay Faber, who has seriously just over and over created these whole uh, universes of his own superheroes that uh, never really uh, kind of seemed to catch on, but he keeps doing it, and it's still fun. Um, but the idea here was to do uh, He Joins, Brian Joins, and uh, Elias K uh, Kiriazis, who does the art, um, to do a superhero book that is not about deconstructing it, that's not about, you know, doing some new twist on the superhero thing, just fun superhero stuff, um, kind of little Judas contracting, there's a mole that nobody knows about, um, so you're hitting in some of that George Perez Teen Titan stuff, which is always good, uh, really nice art, definitely if you like Invincible, same kind of deal, um, but not quite as vicious, because, you know, it's not Ryan Otley. Yeah, you just can't do. get as vicious as no, Invincible no. is. Ryan Otley equals vicious, like, it's, yeah. Although, you can have a pretty close runner-up with James Hare and John Arcudi's Rumble. 
Uh, first issue was nothing but weirdness, monster fighting, kind of nothing really made sense. Second issue, things were starting to come together a bit more, but even more monsters <laughs> and an exploding cat. And number three, Second they're actually... Oh, got it huge! Then blew up! It was awesome! Oh, but you're getting an actual, like, kind of info dump of background information here to appease all of you who were just totally, totally lost and with no idea what to do. Yeah, nothing happened in those issues. Of course, you also get two full splash pages at the very beginning of monsters and swords and everything else that you've come to expect from this series. Um, and from there, you know, it just continues along its course. And, uh, it's pretty amazing. I don't know. You should be reading it. You know, I just noticed that, you know, I shaved this week if you have been watching every week, but I, if if I just let him a little bit more, I would have these Paco Medina uh, <laughs> Peter Quill, it's like chops here, but I'm getting close. I'll have to grow it out so I can do that. Would those um, be star chops? Money star chops. chops. <laughs> hashtag star chops. Um, because hashtag star cat looks like the end of the beginning of the end is over, you know, they hooked up and uh, here's the thing, the power of the black vortex is this real ancient weapon and um, a lot of people, a lot of the heroes are saying we need this power for we're going to escape uh, Mr. Knife and Thane and the, um, the Slaughter Squad, which is really awful. Well, it's a great name anyway, but it's a really cool, awesome, cool. But here's the thing, uh, mm -hmm. this is, this, you may think it's all about Star-Lord and Peter, and, um, Star-Lord is Peter Quill, sorry, and Kitty Pride. But here's, I got three words for you. Storm versus Gamora. It is pretty awesome. It's kind of like, I want to see more of that. That's really awesome. And then you yeah. see these weird new designs that Ed McGinnis did, of, like the Beast and all these other heroes who've kind of allowed themselves to be cosmically enhanced and empowered by the um, Black Vortex. But with power, there's always a price, as we well know. So, um, next. Next, next up. Da -da -da. Next. New from Marvel this week, spinning out of the pages of the very, very, very popular Spider-Verse, uh, Silk, number one, uh, by Robbie Thompson, Stacy Lee, and Ian Herring. Uh, you know, I fully expected this book to be very much like the Spider-Woman book, like big Greg Land, you know, art and whatever, and it's not, which is very nice. Stacy Lee has got this really cool, um, kind of, uh, uh, almost cartoony style, definitely reminding me of, uh, uh, Felicia Henderson in Squirrel Girl lately, um, but this is basically delving into... A character that I couldn't really make heads or tails of in the Spider-Verse thing. I mean, I haven't been reading that much Spider-Man other than Spider-Verse. Um, but she was kind of cool. She and Peter clearly were uh, apparently bit by the same spider. And uh, she is uh, very powerful in the uh, totem of Spider-Man uh, world here. But, uh, yeah, this looks really cool. It's got Black Cat in it. It's got Peter Parker. Um, this looks to be just like a fun super, you know, superhero book. Definitely going for more of that kind of young girl Marvel stuff um, that they've been doing really well. So, kudos. And I got another throwback for you Ooh. here. The hardcover, ah, hardcover oh. translated edition of Barbarella and the Wrath of the Minute Eater. Kelly Studeconic has imported Jean-Claude Forrest's 1962 comic strip, which, yes, inspired the Jane Fonda movie from 68. The totally insane Jane Fonda movie from 68. I love that movie. Um... All in glorious black and white with beautiful brushwork here. I'm not even gonna. Ooh, I'm not even gonna show you this. Does it have those little dolls with teeth that were eating her? That freaked me out when I watched that movie as a kid. I don't know if it does, but it's got that angel dude that she bangs the sad oh. out of. So there's that. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. What are you wow. About, really? Top that. Well, this is another famous <laughs> redhead, but um. She's a little more deadlier, um, and that is the newest issue of Black Widow. Um, I have loved this arc by Nathan Edmonds and Phil Noto. Just turn this into a movie, turn this into a TV show, turn it into an animated movie. I don't care. Just I love this storyline. Nathan Edmonds and rocks it. He really captures who Natasha is. She's been kind of, there's a secret organization called Chaos, and she's been hunting down different agents, and they've been striking back at her friends. And she gets a little bit closer when... Someone from her past, if you love the Ed Brubaker era of Marvel, then you will, your heart will swoon and break and all those good things. But obviously there's not enough time to get emotional because she's too busy badass getting killed and having bullets shot at her. But I'm loving Black Widow once again. Buy this book and let's turn it into a movie, please. Next. Ooh, no, 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 no. I have never talked about a Wonder Woman comic before. This will be the first Wonder Woman comic book that I've ever talked about. 
Uh, Sensation Comics number seven. Uh, this has been um, printing the DC First online stories, and this one features a story by Alex DeCampi, a uh, great, great writer. She does Grindhouse, and um, teaming up with artist Neil Gouge, who did uh, Welcome to Tranquility with Gail Simone, which is really Love cool. Love that stuff. Another really good, like, sort of family superhero yeah, book. Yeah, yeah, it was, it, but, you know, it's sad. It's kind of gone. Um, but yeah, and, uh, this one starts out with, like, really cool badass space Muslim Wonder Woman, uh, which I don't know what that's about, but that's really cool, and then jumps to, like, space armor Wonder Woman, Ooh. and then she's, like, out in space, beating the crap out of <laughs> large monsters from another dimension. Yeah, all about it. Um, yeah, really cool. This is, like, one of the most exciting Wonder Woman books that I've seen in a while. Um, and congrats to Alex DeCampi, who's gonna be writing two Archie vs. Predator soon. Yes! Yes! Let's keep the Wonder Woman love going, because this is Wonder Woman 39. Also this week, this is Meredith and David <coughs> Finch. And this is the big storyline with the new creative team, and uh, pretty much the Amazons are done with her. Um, there's an awesome uh, some scenes of team up, teaming up as uh, Wonder Woman and Batman and and Superman are kind of working together on this story with the Justice League, but there's a big rebellion. I'm not going to really spoil it because they've already been revealed it everywhere, but Donna Troy has finally made her new 52 debut, what? and it is not what you think, <coughs> and it's all tied in with rebellion on, Am on Amazon Island, and um, they're building up a new giant rogue, uh, kind of like an adversary for Wonder Woman, and um, it's pretty cool. I'm loving, and I love David Finch's drawing of her, so there you go. On to you. Speaking of drawings I just oh. love, uh, probably the most beautiful superhero book on the stands right now, I would say, in my opinion, it's hard personally. To be. Hard to beat. We've got The Valiant, from Valiant, issue three, written by Jeff Lemire and Matt Kent, and drawn by the inimitable Paolo Rivera. This man is a total machine. Like, I just... I can't handle it. I've talked about it before. I've talked about this book before. It's just amazing. If you, like, drooled over his year-too-long run on Daredevil covers, oh. this is actual sequential, Wait, solid sequential. Did he sequentials. Did, like, one issue, two issues? <laughs> like, two. Daredevil. Two of them. Okay. <laughs> All I'm saying is, if you don't know the Valiant characters, if you have no idea who Bloodshot is, if you don't know who Exo Manowar is, it doesn't matter. The series does a great job introducing them all, and they're also all drawn by Paolo Rivera. Like, come on. Mm. Uh, my final book this week is Batman and Robin 39. Um, you may have noticed next week, uh, last week, DC announced their plans uh, in June after Convergence, and that's going to be the end of this amazing, Aww. amazing, amazing book really? by the great team of... Pete Tomasi and Patrick Gleason. Um, there will but. be, but there is a spinoff um, because, as you know, after um, Batman's painful and uh, just an, an awesome journey to uh, resurrect Damien, now we have Damien, the son of Batman, is back, and he is super Robin. He's got all kinds of powers, and I hate to quote from another publisher, but with great power comes great responsibility and pretty scary, powerful kids. He was already kind of a little wild child anyway, but now he's got a superpower. Can Batman control him? What's going to happen to the dynamic duo's di father-son dynamic? Um, we'll see what happens with this one. And uh, I love, there's, there's a kind of great moment with, with um, Robin and one of the members of the Justice League that's just kind of classic. They kind of just, they, they do the action, but they do the emotion really well. That's why I love Tomasi and Gleason so bad. And that's my final book. But we have just one more no, book. Two. Just two. 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 No, I only got one, man. I, just because you only got one book doesn't mean I don't have one book. What, what okay. am I? Just like chocolate Chalk river over okay. here? That is exactly I'm what just, you are. I'm just hang. We're on good terms right now, Casey. But go ahead. You know, why don't you go, go first? Bigger man. No, no, no. You know what? Right? No, no, hey, hey, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no. It's oh, good. God. Fine. Then you know what? I. Just throw my comics on the oh, ground. Oh, 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 that's right. All the way I down to good condition. Ugh. Ugh. I beg absolute forgiveness. He was going to not let me talk about multiversity. Can you believe that? Grant Morrison and Jim Lee, that's right, Mr. Jim Lee, who uh, somehow found time to draw this in between Superman Unchained and doing DC stuff. Um, I'm only going to say one thing really about this, and it's Adolf Hitler. Oh, yes. As you've never seen him As before. you know. And, and I've read Operation Bollock in The Adventures of the Rifle Brigade by Garth Ennis with, with uh, Hitler. And, yeah. 
Um, but basically, this is uh, this is number six, I think we're at. Are we at like six or so? Something. We're like very that. close it's to the, the last end now. one before the cursed before ultra, the ultra comics. Cursed ultra comics. I know. Just finished reading uh, the guidebook, which was amazing, and I'm so very very excited to see the Superman of the Fourth Reich or whatever Reich this is um, <laughs> versus Uncle Sam. And you know what? My money's on Superman. And I'm gonna throw two I'm on the ground. What now? Put your cup up. You know, for the record, you didn't deserve to talk about old diversity. <laughs> oh, really? But I've got for you a new debut from Dark Horse Comics. The team of Raphael Albuquerque and Mike Johnson bring you eight. No, not a eight hurt. It's kind of like the seven in where you don't pronounce the seven, <laughs> seven in. The in. <laughs> um, this is a new time travel series from American vampire artist Raphael Albuquerque, who has enlisted Mike Johnson to help him with the script and the story here. I don't know what it's really about beyond that it's time travel. <laughs> and it's gorgeous. But I don't need to know. <laughs> because Raphael Albuquerque is an amazing, amazing artist. And he's far too often relegated to cover duties. Um, last thing I read from him was his story in Batman Black and White, which was fantastic. Had a dead man guest appearance in there. Um, and he's really pushing his uh, sort of experimentation with comics. He... Uses a lot of gray tones and stuff in his art normally, but, you know, when you have another colorist working on it, that doesn't always show yeah. through. But the tones in here are, like, basically nothing I've seen from his wow. work so far, sequentially. It's wow. Yeah. It's really, really, really beautiful stuff here. This is going to run for five issues from Dark Horse. And now I think that that officially may be the end here. Uh, Might be the end of me after this episode as well. Yeah, so. you know, I'm firing both of you guys. You know what? How about that? Go back to doing this by myself. I got the most views, didn't I, Sam? That's right. Yeah, I'm by myself. Monkey's shaking his head. Whatever. You put the monkey on the camera next and see how long you watch. No. <laughs> Bye, guys.